You all must have seen that hot vampire feature looking guy that is everywhere after his fight with Yuji Itadori in the Shibuya arc. And by everywhere, I mean the endless amounts of edits and cosplays by so many people. Yeah, him. I'm him. I'm literally him. Today, we're doing a character analysis on Choso from Jujutsu Kaisen and understanding why he is someone people would write books about. As a cursed wombborn, it is only natural for Choso to have curious instincts. His upbringing has left him with a lot of questions about his lineage and the world beyond it. Who is his father? Why is he not able to fit in as a complete cursed spirit or a human? What is the eventual goal of his life? How will he navigate through this situation that he was put in since his birth? There's a lot to be answered over here, and he himself yearns to understand the broader context of curses, jujitsu sorcery, and the supernatural forces that envelop his existence. But Choso does find answers to a lot of these questions as the series progresses, and despite being a half-cursed spirit and half-human, he is not violent and does not hold any disdain towards the Jujutsu Sorcerers. In fact, he doesn't even speak in general and is like that background character that you often feel at every social gathering. You can only ever see him engaging in a conversation when it's about his family as he actually loves his human mother and only despises the sorcerer that toyed with her. Another focal point of his life in the series of Jujutsu Kaisen is his relationship with his brothers, which in itself is a complex story. They are all connected by the way they came to be, by products of Kenjaku, which we'll get into the details in a while, but all of them harbor different personalities and skills. His ability, blood connection, allows him to sense the transformation of his younger brothers no matter how far they are. Death is considered as a transformation, which is why Choso was able to sense when Iso and Kichizu, other incarnations of the cursed womb, death paintings, that he refers to as his brothers, were getting killed. This ability also helps helped him realize that Yuji Itadori is his half-brother and stopped him from killing Yuji. Initially, it was unclear how Yuji and Choso had a connection, but Choso with his intellectual abilities was instantly able to connect the dots. We also witness him confronting Kenjaku about this, but I think being too curious can put you in a dangerous situation, as we all have heard. Curiosity killed the cat. In a similar manner, Choso's curiosity and support for his brother put him in a one-on-one -on -one combat with his father. Kenjaku himself, and if it wasn't for Yuki, we are not sure if Choso would have survived despite his outstanding abilities. Before we talk about Choso's protective instincts towards his brothers, it is important to understand their creation and what ties them together. At the beginning of the Meiji era in Jujutsu Kaisen, there was a woman with a special genetic composition who bore a half-human and half-cursed child. This mysterious pregnancy led to her being ostracized by her family. However, However, Noritoshi Kamo, the evilest sorcerer in history, captured her and forced her to fulfill his curiosity. This woman had nine pregnancies and nine abortions where the babies were taken out at a certain state before they could fully develop, and it's known as the nine death painting cursed wombs. At some point, Tokyo Jujutsu High was able to secure all nine of the death painting wombs. They used constraints to seal the cursed objects and stored them inside Jujutsu High's cursed warehouse house, which is hidden behind Tengen's concealing barrier, so you know that security is extra tight. But of course, Gege loves all of his villains so much that Mahito and Kenjaku were able to get death painting wombs number one to three and incarnated them soon after, which is how Iso, Kichisu, and Choso came to life. This series of events is also relevant to Choso's ability to blood connection with his brothers. Now to answer the question of how Yuji is Choso's half-brother, Kenjaku took over Yuji's mom and gave birth to Yuji. All of this is very messed up, especially if you consider it under real life circumstances. While a person like Kenjaku shifting bodies is not a possibility in real life, studying his actions that are based on pure experimentation is awful. Going back to the main topic, being the oldest brother, Choso has always felt the responsibility of looking after his other brothers. He believes that he needs to protect his younger brothers and serve as a dependable example because that's what an elder brother does. He also set his life online just to support Yuji and make up for the hurt he caused before. The way Choso's character is written is quite appreciable since it is a beautifully complex character that despite his unfortunate birth paves his own way in life. 
Choso's birth made him question a lot of things, especially wanting to find his father, not being able to tell that he aligned with him. Then comes his love for his brothers, ended up getting killed by Yuji Itadori, and finally, in his fight with Yuji, the realization that they are actually brothers. His life is full of insane plot twists, and the credit goes to the insane writing that's done in the series. When it comes to personality, Choso is calm and seems indifferent. He does not engage in battles such as the one with Go Gojo where he didn't want to indulge in killing him because there was not much point to it according to his ideologies. He only ever cares when his family is involved. In a clash of ideals with Naoya Zenin, he refused to understand his ideology of hate only because Naoya's older brothers were weak. He said that as an older brother, it is his responsibility to either present a road to travel on or the one to avoid. This incident explains how Choso tried his best to be a good older brother despite despite how he was created and whether or not he was a human or a cursed spirit. His character feels much more human than many humans in Jujutsu Kaisen. Choso's dual heritage narratively makes him one of the biggest potential-based characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. As a half-human, he inherited a curse technique from the Kamo clan, was born with two brothers while being able to sense their death, and was born from a human mother, although the method is quite shady. As a half-cursed spirit, he has no memory, natural has the inclination to kill humans without paying much mind to it, and his existence must be purged. He is granted a human curse technique and amplified its effectiveness due to his cursed spirit nature. In the words of Mekamaru, a blood manipulator without the risk of blood loss since he can regenerate his blood. Inevitably, Choso is more human than a curse, despite the fact that he can be a curse with unknown risk but has no hidden agenda, unlike Sukuna. So, it is more factually accurate to call him human. I mean, even Yuki told him to finally be one. His humane sentiment of brotherhood is further proof of that. His abilities and skill set further his strong sense of identity. All in all, Choso found out how to be his own person and work for his own personal cause despite his circumstances. When it comes to his morals, Choso initially embraces his role as a curse and the violence that accompanies this role becomes second nature to him. But as time passes, he begins to question the very fact fabric of his actions. Is violence truly the only path? Yes! You are my special. Like Satoru's moral compass was Sukuru's existence back when they were in Jujutsu High, Choso's moral compass is calibrated by his family, and his love for his brothers is unconditional and unwavering as seen on multiple occasions throughout the series. He can't understand someone like Naoya Zenin. Naoya hates all of his older brothers because they are weaker than him. Choso argues that older siblings either present the road to travel or the one to avoid. He believes perhaps someone like Naoya is only strong because his brothers are weak. Unlike Naoya, Choso didn't have an older brother to show him the way, so he always stumbled and made mistakes. Even so, Choso stands tall and walks the path ahead of his younger brothers, and it is from this dedication that he draws strength. When it comes to ethics, Choso is a simpleton, protects his brothers, and kills his father, Kenjaku, the real tormentor of his entire life. While for humans there exists a concept of forgiveness, we also need to remember Choso's half-cursed spirit nature, which holds values of vengeance and just wants to destroy the thing they hate the most. As we have established before, it is safe to consider Choso as a human, at least far more than his cursed spirit side given his character development through the series. It is a major fact about human beings that they desire connection. One cannot succeed in life if their achievements are not recognized by another individual. We rely on others to be a person in general. Hence, it is natural for a character like Choso to desire human connection. And he does make connections with characters like Yuji, Yuki, Maki, and the rest of the group going to meet Tengen. He also wants to dissolve connections that cause him pain, such as that of his father, and values connections that he lost to the natural phenomena of death, such as his two brothers. He also confirms the existence of the rest of the six death painting wombs inside Tengen's barrier and takes the Jujutsu sorcerers there. His ability to take responsibility and maintain these connections is highly appreciable.
Choso demonstrates adaptability and growth throughout the series, evolving as a character in response to his experiences and interactions with others. He is a special grade curse who is intelligent and self-aware, allowing him to hone his curse techniques for 150 years. By the time he was incarnated, Choso had already mastered blood manipulation to a level that far surpasses the current Noritoshi Kamo. In addition to Jujutsu, Choso also excels in Taijutsu, capable of standing up against a master martial artist like Yuji. Using his wit alongside a host of techniques to contend with Yuji's strength, Choso overcame his opponent to the degree that he could have ended his life. Despite exhausting himself during the Shibuya incident, Choso continued to fight and clashed with Kenjaku in order to help Yuji. Although Kenjaku escaped mostly unscathed, his partner Urome was hit by Choso's piercing blood technique and poisoned. Naoya Zenin, a special grade 1 sorcerer and inheritor of the former head of the Zenin family's projection sorcery, is another close combat fighter that Choso battled and defeated. In addition to this, Choso and his brothers were all created as an experiment by Kenjaku to exceed the bounds of cursed energy, which is why he is able to use his curse technique without exhausting much cursed energy. Like Iso and Kichisu, Choso's blood is also poisonous, something he thinks should be obvious. It takes effect fairly quickly and drains its victim's stamina, causing them to sit and find themselves short of breath. He also holds the ability of blood conservation, allowing him to convert his cursed energy into blood. As long as Choso has enough cursed energy, he can prevent his body from dying of blood loss. This makes him capable of bleeding a little literal wave of blood without suffering any significant dysfunction in his performance. His abilities do not end with blood manipulation as he is able to exhibit many more like slicing exorcism, convergence, piercing blood, supernova, blood edge, flowing red scale, flowing red scale, stack, blood meteorite, and wing king. The credit for this range of abilities goes to his adaptability to his opponents and constant growth in battle. Wing king literally imitates his brother Iso's maximum Wing King by creating a halo of blood that sprouts four wasp-like wings, albeit smaller than the original technique. A notable event of his craft is when Choso, during his battle with his father, surprised Kenjaku a second time when he re-entered the fray after allowing Yuki to take over. Despite his injuries, Choso continued to play a pivotal role in the fight, rescuing Yuki and ambushing Kenjaku in one fell swoop. Choso understood it had to be Yuki to deal a decisive blow and and fought alongside her Shikigami to buy her time to heal herself. This allowed them to take the momentum back which again impressed Yuki, who initially believed Choso would hold her back if they fought together. Choso's adaptability makes him a master in combat and intellectual strategy. When faced with the responsibility of protecting Yuji against an impossible opponent like Yuta Okotsu, Choso was able to form a solid plan in a very short amount of time. Although Choso was ultimately thwarted, he wanted to block off Yuta and allow Yuji to escape while also dealing with Naoya so the speed type couldn't give chase. Once Choso realized he was at a disadvantage, he focused on his technique flowing red scale stats in his eyes to raise his dynamic visual acuity in order to track Naoya's speed. He also noticed that Naoya was familiar with blood manipulation and got the Zenin clan sorcerer to walk right into Supernova, a Choso original Naoya's clan would have no knowledge of. Another example of his battle readability and strategic approach is when he helped create the best possible plan to combat Kenjaku with Yuki and Tengen. Choso pointed out that Kenjaku wouldn't open his domain against Yuki if he knew someone else was lying in wait. The plan was altered to use Choso to draw out Kenjaku's curse techniques and convincingly remove himself from the fight. This was ultimately successful despite a few mishaps. As noted by Naoya Zenin, Choso is exceptionally tough. He was able to withstand multiple hits from Yuji who possesses superhuman strength enhanced with cursed energy and masterful precision in his martial arts technique. The death painting womb was also on the receiving end of consecutive blows and hits from Naoya that carry the momentum from him moving at blistering speeds. In both hard-fought battles, Choso was able to endure and come out on top. Choso continued to press on even after his lengthy duel with Yuji as a testament to his stamina as well. Choso received his most brutal beating fighting one-on-one -on -one against Kenjaku. He was severely injured by an onslaught from cursed spirit manipulation, but used the image of his brothers to persevere and continue fighting. Choso often grapples with 
with questions about existence, mortality, and the essence of being, so his existence may seem like a mere interlude between birth and the void. To him, life is a meaningless vessel of being, since he is able to finish off humans without much remorse. But this idea can be further expanded as both ephemeral and eternal, a paradox that haunts one's waking hours. The idea of death in retrospect, for Choso, is not an end but a threshold. He rejects the nihilistic views, embracing the possibility of continuity, with his brothers in the afterlife as seen in this flashback of sorts. His character's core is the embodiment of these reflections and his interactions over time further develop it into a fan favorite. Although Choso has been accepted by Yuji, he still regrets what happened with Iso and Kichisu. He feels responsible for the death of his younger brothers and fears that Yuji will be left alone because of his older brother's foolish choices. Choso initially decided to live as curses because he knew Iso and Kichisu wouldn't be accepted by humanity. Choso now feels as if that was the easy path which in turn ruined a future where the four of them were destined to all fight together. He was very emotional when admitting this to Yuki, who eventually told him to die as a curse so he could live on as a human alongside Yuji. Despite their short time together, Choso was distraught over Yuki's death and did his best to honor her legacy by passing her notes on to Yuji. Even the worst of people can sometimes learn the path of redemption and Choso stands as one of the few, if not only, in Jujutsu Kaisen who was able to switch sides and delve into the concept of forgiveness. And his motivation behind it was very pure, to help his brothers no matter what side they belong to. Choso's dedication to his family is on par with any since shortly after discovering Yuji as a brother, he decided to switch sides and put his life online to help Yuji. This act was just him making up for what he did to Yuji previously. His conversation with Yuki also paints quite a human picture of just two beings having a conversation about how they really feel about each other. Yuki, being our Jujutsu Kaisen therapist, also always finds people in complicated situations like Geto or Choso and then gives them an opinion that may further their cause. All in all, it is commendable how Choso progressed and dealt with his external and internal issues. And it is obvious why he gained so much popularity not not only with his looks, but with his character development throughout the series. He even has specific songs dedicated to him. Choso's character simultaneously is both simple and complicated. His dual heritage has provided him with both amplification of abilities and complexity of his emotions. But despite all of this, it makes one ponder why he never realized before that his father was right in front of his eyes all along. What was his ultimate goal before his brother's death that made him align with Kenjaku and Mahito apart from the fact that he was incarnated by them? Did he always have this spark in him to learn more about the other side that existed beyond the one where he was previously standing? As always, the more we think about it, the more questions pop up. But let me know what you think. And there you have it folks, that's Choso in a nutshell. Hit that like button if you had as much fun as I did exploring his character and dive into the next video for more mind-blowing content.